Welcome to this webinar on the symmetry range of H.264 network cameras. When we started this journey, we wanted a range of cameras that offered H.264 encoding. They had to be high quality products, but still needed to be cost effective. They also had to be flexible and, most importantly, very easy to use. The range gives us two indoor cameras, one box and one low-cost mini fixed dome, and two cameras suitable for indoor and outdoor use, a fixed dome and a pan tilt zoom or PTZ. These cameras are all available now. This table shows the variants of each camera that are available. They all have IP connectivity and the 7510, 7530 and 7550 also have an analog video output with either PAL or S NTSC format. Variants of the 7510, 7520 and 7530 are also available with built-in analytics. H.264 offers significant benefits over other compression techniques, including reduced bandwidth and storage requirements. The analytics in these cameras are edge-based, meaning the processing is done inside the camera, so there's no need for any additional analytics hardware elsewhere on the network. They use standard network protocols, and are fully integrated into symmetry video management software. This allows alerts from the analytics to initiate symmetry trigger commands which could, for example, activate a sounder or a strobe, or even initiate recording of all cameras in adjacent areas to provide video evidence. So let's have a look at the technical specs on these cameras. The EN7510 is an IP camera with an analog video output and a range of resolutions suitable for most applications. A power supply is provided in the price, but this camera is also compatible with power over ethernet, which can simplify installation. Day-night operation and automatic gain control make it more flexible in environments where there are varying light levels. Intelligent detection is provided as standard and analytics is available on the VCA version. I'll explain more about these features later on. A micro SD card can be added for local storage of JPEG images. It has, alarm it has one alarm input and one output and is provided with a 3 to 8 mm zoom lens. The lens is supplied with the camera and uses a standard CS mount. The lens cable is plugged in at the back of the housing. Once a PoE power over Ethernet connection is made, the camera is running. Other connections include a BNC for the analog video and plug on terminal blocks for the digital inputs and outputs, etc. The EN7520 is an IP device only, so there is no analog output. The resolutions are the same as the EN7510, but as this device uses a CMOS sensor, D1 and 4SIF are upscaled images from its native VGA. A power supply is provided, as this camera is not compatible with PoE, to keep it cost competitive. Once again, intelligent detection is standard, with analytics available on the VCA version. The dome is locked in place until the outer ring is rotated. It can then be removed to access the lens. When focus, it is locked in place with the Allen key provided to ensure that it cannot move when the cover is replaced. The connections for power and Ethernet are available on flying leads. The EN7530 is a fixed dome camera that can be used indoors or outdoors. It has an analog output and the same resolution, range of resolutions as before. 
a power supply is provided, although it is also compatible with PoE. Day-night operation and automatic gain control makes it ideal in varying light levels. As for the previous Symmetry H264 cameras, intelligent detection is standard with analytics available on the VCA version. The zoom range is times 3.75 and when alarm input and output increases its flexibility. To install the camera, undo the three screws with the Allen key provided and remove the dome. You will then have access to the lens. Once the zoom and focus are set, the controls are locked with the thumb screws to ensure that they cannot move when the cover is replaced. The main connections for power and Ethernet are easily accessible on flying leads. Here we are using a PoE cable which is all that's actually needed. Other connections for video, inputs, outputs and audio are available via a plug-on terminal block inside the camera housing. The EN7550 is a PTZ camera suitable for indoor or outdoor use. It has an analog output and the same range of resolution as the other cameras. A power supply is provided because this camera is not compatible with PoE due to the current consumption. Day-night operation and automatic again control are standard and the lens has a zoom range of times 10. Although the EN7550 has intelligent detection as standard, analytics are not yet available until they can be linked to a preset position to avoid false alarms. The camera is removed from the base using the special screwdriver supplied in the box. The camera itself is a sealed module so there is no access to the lens. All connections are accessible on the rear camera, including status LEDs, micro SD slot, etc. Configuration is very simple using the camera's internal web pages, with a variety of graphical techniques and simple menus. We will see some of these configuration screens as we go through the webinar. Here for example, you can see the codec configuration page showing the resolution being changed from D1 to VGA. Motion detection is available as standard across the range, but these cameras really come into their own with the advent of the built-in analytics. Analytics has not really taken off over the years, and it has been expensive and difficult to use. Modern digital signal processing chips have really turned this around and made analytics far more accessible and reliable. <coughs> the analytics in these cameras has been designed to be very easy to configure and very easy to use. Despite the increasing reliability of analytics, it is true to say that it is not always suitable for every application. Because of this, we strongly recommend that you try it out before using it on any given site. This screen shows the difference between Video Motion Detection VMD, and Video Content Analytics VCA. The VMD image shows motion in the water as it picks up the ripples, whereas the VCA image locks onto just the target and tracks it across the screen. As can be seen, the boat on the left-hand side almost merges into the background noise. This is another comparison. Motion is detected in the trees as the branches move in the wind. In some instances, there is more movement in the trees as there, are in, as there is in the target. The VCA image once again locks onto the target and tracks it reliably across the screen. Intelligent detection is a basic form of analytics which tracks up to 100 simultaneous targets 
and up to 40 detection zones, and is supplied as standard with every camera in the range. Object presence simply means that any of the targets inside any of the detection zones will generate an alert. Camera tamper detection is also provided as standard. We'll describe this later on. In this screen, the yellow box shows the boundary of the target, and the trail shows the movement. An alert is generated if the point where the trail meets the boundary box is inside a detection zone. VCA provides much more flexibility than intelligent detection, as it allows us to define relationships between the target and the detection zone. Did the target enter or exit the zone? Did it suddenly appear or disappear? Perhaps it stopped moving inside the zone or even continued to move for a period of time whilst remaining inside the zone. This screen shows a detection zone superimposed on the camera view. When first created, a detection zone is an oblong. But dragging the white nodes allows us to change the shape. It is also possible to double click on the edge of the zone to create new nodes to form complex ships as shown in this slide. Here we can see the additional nodes allowing us to wrap the detection zone around the visitor registration kiosk. Returning to the previous slide we see the detection zone set up for this scene. The zone overlaps the wall which allows us to differentiate between someone in front of the wall entering the zone and someone behind the wall appearing in it. We will now show a short video clip of someone entering the zone, disappearing behind the wall, then appearing again. As the analytics is configured to generate an alert on appear, the boundary box will show as red, allowing the symmetry video management software to start recording pre and post alarm video. So as the target enters the zone we see the yellow detection box. He then disappears from the zone and then as he reappears the detection zone, zone will show as red and the video is recorded. VCA also allows us to further refine what we consider to be an alert by adding direction filters and object classification. Counting can also provide useful on-screen information. This is one of the configuration web pages in the camera and we can see that we have added a green detection line to generate an alert if someone moves to the right, shown by the detection of the arrow, but will not generate an alert if they walk to the left. The direction is set with the mouse, dragging the central arrow to point in the appropriate direction. Similarly, the acceptance angle is set by dragging either of the shorter arrows. If preferred, this information can be entered manually on the right hand side. A feature called camera shake cancellation is designed to provide a more stable signal to increase the reliability of the analytics. It is important to note, however, that it does not stabilize the viewed image. Tamper detection can generate an alerts from a variety of conditions, such as the camera being covered, or moved, or if its focus is adjusted. Tamper is configurable so an alert can be generated if, for example, a certain percentage of the image is covered for a predefined time. 
This screen shows the effect of placing bubble wrap over the camera. The message tampering detected is displayed on the screen, as well as the alert being sent to the video management software. And this is how the camera would be set up. With tamper enabled, we can define the tamper duration until alarm and tampered image area. In this case, a tamper alert will be generated if 40% of the image is covered for 20 seconds. Historically, image calibration has been a very complex task. These cameras have a graphical user interface, sometimes called a GUI or GUI, to make it much easier and much quicker. In most instances, the camera can be calibrated simply by setting the height and tilt angle. On-screen mimics and rulers make it easy to confirm that the calibration is correct. This is the calibration setup screen. The height of the camera is set by rolling the mouse wheel and the tilt angle is set by dragging the green grid superimposed on the scene. Alternatively, if the height and tilt angle are known, they can be entered in the boxes in the menu on the right hand side. Sometimes it can be useful for the analytics to ignore some objects on the screen while acting on others. Object classification allows us to define objects of interest based on size and speed. Here for example, the camera has identified a person and a dog, so it could generate an alert if the person crosses a detection line but not if the dog crosses it. In the setup screen we can see that a person is defined as being between 0.75 and 2 square meters, moving at a speed between 0 and 20 kilometers per hour. It is also possible to embed the object's data into the image if required. Simply select include objects and tick the data to be included, in this case, non-alarm objects and classification. It is also possible to redefine the colours used for alarm objects, the default being red, and non-alarm objects, the default being yellow. Configuring the analytics then can be as simple as creating a detection line or zone and deciding on the type of alert required, such as enter or appear. Here we can see the detection zone in red and the menu on the right hand side shows that we are looking for a person to appear in it. This is the configuration setup for the video clip we saw earlier of the person with the cardboard box. Here is another example where we are looking for a person to dwell or loiter in the detection zone for five seconds. This configuration might be useful if we are looking for someone going through the pockets of a coat on the coat rack. The next three slides of videos that are supplied with each camera show an analytics in action or being set up. This first video shows someone crawling through the long grass. The size of the boundary box changes as the target shows more and less of itself. When the target disappears in the grass, the tracking engine loses it and the boundary box disappears. It then reappears again when it sees more movement. This next video shows tamper detection in action. The camera is moved a few degrees to the right and a tamper alert is generated after the predefined period. This video shows how to calibrate the camera. 
the height of the camera is set in this instance by entering in the box on the right hand side and the grid is then dragged to adjust the tilt angle by moving the mimics next to something on the screen of a known height we can check the calibration in this case still not quite right so we drag the grid down a little more we can double check the calibration by using the on-screen ruler to check the, the size of a known object once we're happy with this we click apply to save the settings Each camera is supplied with a CD with all the information you'll need, as well as some innovative training videos on how to configure and use the analytics. This CD includes a utility called IP Admin Tool. This searches for all symmetry cameras on all network segments and provides information such as IP address, MAC address and friendly name. Although it's possible to identify cameras and change their IP address, it is not possible to view the camera's web page across network segments without first changing the IP address. Where there are a large number of cameras installed, it is possible to display specific segments of the network to scan, in this case 10.234.0. We mentioned earlier that these cameras are fully integrated with a Symmetry video management software. Adding a camera into Symmetry has been made as simple as possible. Start by selecting Digital Video in the Install menu to display this screen. Select Symmetry 7500 series in the left hand menu and click New. The next screen appears allowing the target camera to be identified with a description, IP address, username and password. Click the connect button and the red box turns green to show that the camera is now connected. The camera's web page is also displayed allowing any changes to be made. The tabs allow specific integration features between the video management software and the camera to be configured, but in the vast majority of instances the defaults will suffice. Click Save at the bottom of the screen not shown here and the camera is now displayed in the list of available devices. The Live View screen now includes the new camera without having to do anything else. Simply drag and drop the camera into an empty cell to display the live image. So in conclusion, the range gives us two indoor cameras, one box and one low-cost mini fixed dome, and two cameras suitable for indoor and outdoor use, a fixed dome and a pan-tilt zoom. They all use H.264 encoding and have intelligent detection as standard, most with analytics available as an option. All are fully integrated into Symmetry video management software. Thank you for listening to this webinar on the symmetry range of H.264 network cameras.